Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, the sun is shining, it's a beautiful day, and still only 84% of you guys who watch my videos are subscribed. Unbelievable. So we need to change that. If you're liking watching the content and you're not already subscribed, then make sure you hit the subscribe button just so you don't miss any of the future videos and just so you show your support and stay on board. Anyway, so guys, I'm sure that you are kind of like me where you've still kind of been cooped up in your flat or your house and you've been living online, living on the computer. So I thought today, seeing this is my day off, it'd be the perfect time to do something that's actually, you know, IRL, actually make something physical or basically just make something that I can then use on a screen. So we will end up back on a screen. So in today's video, we're gonna be creating our own like sort of wheat paper texture or this sort of rippled paper texture, something that I see a lot used in the design world. I see it all the time on Instagram. So for this DIY craft session that we're doing today, you're gonna to need four things. Number one, you're gonna need a baking tray. You're gonna need some cling film. You're gonna need some A4 paper, just plain cartridge paper straight out the printer. And number four is a camera, either your phone camera. I mean, they're pretty good nowadays. We're only doing this for like digital purposes. so. Phone camera should be uh, sort of sufficient enough. If you've got a DSLR or a better camera, then you can use that. All good, all good. I assume you have all of this stuff sort of laying around your gaff. If not, I'm sure you can just sort of freestyle it and make it work. Yeah, that's all you need, very simple. What I'm gonna do is show you how to create it and what I've been creating, and then um, I'll show you how to actually use that in Photoshop to create the own textures and use that with an actual poster design mock-up. So uh, the full process, so hopefully you get to see how you can actually take it from just a bit of paper into Photoshop and uh, create yourself some cool posters. Right, so I'm gonna grab my baking tray, just stick it on the side, and then I'm gonna grab my cling film that I've just ripped off, and I'm just gonna wrap it around the back of the baking tray. So I'm now just gonna run the tap and wet the paper on both sides, not so it's just like completely ripping apart, but just so it's wet enough on both sides that it's kind of soaked through the paper. Gotta be careful just to make sure you don't rip the paper, but uh, once it's done, I'm just gonna put it on top of the back of my baking tray on that cling film and just make sure it's nice and flat. Then you're gonna wanna just leave it to dry for like five minutes, not so it's like completely dry, you want it to still be quite damp, but just so there's no like sort of puddles of water on top of your paper. Bone apple teeth. So once you've given it a couple minutes, you're gonna to wanna to set up somewhere that you can be able to take some decent photos. So either in front of the window or in front of a softbox if you've got one, I've already got mine set up, so I just stuck it on my table. And where it's already starting to dry, it should have dried to the cling from underneath, so you're gonna have a really basic ripple effect already. So just using your camera, grab some nice pictures, and once you're happy with your first photo that's quite minimal, just scrunch the paper a little bit and making little lines and ripples and folds in the paper and just keep making it more and more intense until basically you've got a range of photos from quite clean and minimal to quite a ruined, rippled bit of paper. The good thing about having the cling film underneath means that you can sort of stretch the paper back out again and remove some of those folds once they're there and that cling film adds a little bit of support to the paper. So as you can see, I've just done a little time lapse here of me taking photos and just each time making it a little bit more damaged and even adding in a few little rips here and there, just so it's a little bit more interesting. Right, so once we're happy with our images and we're ready to edit them, I'm just gonna pick just a one image as an example, but obviously you take as many as you want and edit as many as you want. Create your own sort of texture pack for yourself. So I've just created a canvas here, which is perfect for Instagram. So it's 1080 width by 1350 pixels high. And I'm just gonna create a black background. Now that I'm ready to edit my image, I'm just gonna drop in the image that I liked like so, click the tick. So the one I'm going for here is quite crinkled, as you can tell. And obviously we need to get rid of this background. So because it's on a dark background, it should be quite easy just to mask out. Again, you can be as particular with this as you like, just for the purposes of this, it will be quite quick. So you can go ahead and just use this selection tool to go around the outside. And then we can just simply mask out the background. Now it's gonna do an inverted version. So we can go on the mask, press Command I to invert it. And we've got our outline. I'm also just gonna press Option and click on the mask and then just create a box, invert it, uh, and fill that with black, just so I don't have any fringes on my images, like, you know, the edges of where you've cropped something out. So I can click back on here, and I know that there's not gonna be any weird fringes coming up around here. Now, the edges on this are not perfect, again, because I'm doing it quickly, but if you wanted to just go in, you could just go around the edges and use your pen, or you could just use your mouse or whatever, go on your mask, and just using a hard brush, you can sort of clean up these edges and sort of refine them a little bit. Make sure that you're getting rid of any of these sort of pixels. And so it looks nice and clean, nice and sharp on the edges. 
So the obvious problem here is it's got a bit of a weird blue tint to it because I took it outside of my window. I'm guessing just the natural light that's coming through. So to change this, what we want to do is just go to our adjustments layer, go down to hue and saturation, and we're going to bring the saturation completely down. Just completely remove any of the color that's in that image. So we have ourselves a nice, just a grayscale piece of white paper. I'm also going to play with the levels slightly just so I get a little bit more of a dramatic shadow and light by creating a little S curve. And then I'm going to group these three or highlight these three right click and just convert to a smart object. So we've got that nice and clean on its own. Cool, so we just turn our paper into a nice crumbly texture here, sort of wheat pasted. It's a little bit more rough around the edges, depending on how you sort of made yours at the start. You can have it as minimal, with just a few little like strips and ripples in there. We can have it as destroyed as you like, whatever you fancy, but we're going with this one for now. So we're now ready to design our poster and then overlay it. So what I'm gonna do is design a poster, design some just simple text layout that I'm gonna be using on the Instagram for when I post this. And then what we're gonna do is just sort of mock it up on this paper and allow the textures to sort of come through the design and make it look a little bit more realistic. Right, so I've made my posters and you've created your own poster designs and I exported them as a PNG just because I didn't want any of that background information that I don't need. I'm trying to mark it up on here. I don't need a white background or anything like that. So what we can actually do is just jump into our actual smart object here. So we're just working on a canvas size around this bit of paper, just makes things a little bit easier. So if you double click on that, you'll go into your own little smart object that um, is kind of only just around that bit of paper. So I'm now gonna drag in the poster design that I mocked up like so. And this is very, very bold. It's just some like big striking text basically. But what we can do is just drop that in, just get a rough sort of scale, make it as big or as small as you want, but just sort of get it so it kind of fits within that bit of paper nicely, like so. So we can now go to our poster layer, right click, go to blending options, and then we can start messing around with this blend layer, these sort of blend sliders down here and get the right sort of shading coming through. So we're gonna start with the shadows on this paper and if we just option click on this slider, we can split the slider. I'm just gonna bring this up the top here and bring this one in, just so you start to see a little bit of this darker area cutting through here. And then we're gonna to wanna to click on our highlight slider, press option, click again to split that. And we're gonna start bringing that down as well. Now you can play around with these sliders as much as you want just to see how much of that texture you want to come through and how much of the light you want to come through. Now the way I've taken the photo, obviously the light is coming from the bottom left, which I don't really want. I prefer the light to come from the top right. So what we can do is just simply flip our bit of paper around just so I've got the lights or I've got the sort of highlights coming from the top right because it always looks a lot more natural when it's coming from the top right. Uh, and then just need to recenter my artwork. Now, as you can see, without the black background, you can see a lot of imperfections around the edges here, which we can then remove in here again using this mask. Now, I don't know if that's a little bit too dramatic. I might make the highlights a little bit more subtle. And I'm also gonna bring up a few of those shadows just to add in some of the crinkles like so. And I'm also gonna drop the total opacity, I think, just by a few just 95 will do. So we can always just save this and then go back to our main layer to see how it's looking. So you can then play with this as much as you want. So uh, add in your own damaged textures to the type to make it look more realistic or add in like a print effect, like a sort of stamp effect or something like that, or a screen print effect to make this look a little bit more realistic in terms of the actual print. I'm gonna go ahead and actually try and match a little bit of the background by adding in some noise and a little bit of blur just because it's not gonna be completely perfect. But at the moment, this is looking too rigid. So uh, I'm gonna add in a small amount of blur, a little bit of grain. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of noise to the whole image. So we can actually manipulate the side of this a little bit more as in like the actual flow of the poster. If we click on the side here and then go up to our transform options here, we can then sort of move the edges and move any of the points around as much as we want. And this isn't perfect, it's crumpled up. So we wanna mimic the, the shape of the background. So we can distort this all a little bit here. I'm actually just gonna drop that down to 90, I think, just so it's a little bit more gray rather than solid black and save that. So as you can see, there's quite a lot going on on here. I think this will probably work a little bit better with a minimal post design, to be honest, because the background is quite hectic. I had mine quite creased, so you might have done yours a little bit more uh, subtle. Anything looks good, to be honest. But yeah, feel free to go crazy. Use as many different print techniques as you want or uh, effects on the actual text. Mine at the moment doesn't look too realistic, too printed. I've done another tutorial on my page how you can sort of mimic this ink bleed effect. So do that, add that to the sides there, and I'm sure you'll be looking right as rain, looking realistic, looking like a real fly poster. I'm actually also so just gonna go filter, distort, 
ripple and I'm just gonna ripple the edges ever so slightly. Yeah, slight ripple on the edge there. So the edges are not perfect. And from afar, you can see the edges there are not completely perfect. They look a little bit wobbly, it's a little bit more realistic. And yeah, it looks good. It's great, I'm happy with that. Happy with this post design. Um, and yeah, it's good just to use your own textures really and use something that you've created yourself, create something completely different and uh, you know that no one else is gonna be using the same sort of textures as you. Also, one quick tip if you wanna learn how to actually change the color of the paper whilst inside your smart object layer, select the two adjustment layers and your paper layer and convert that to another smart object. Then create a solid color and drag it to the bottom of your layers. You then want to command click on your paper layer at the bottom so it creates a selection of the paper and then create a mask on your color layer and mask that area out. You may need to invert your mask so it masks out all of the area around the paper. So you then want to change the blending mode on your paper to linear burn. You can now cycle through any colour and the paper will be that colour. This will affect the uh, graphic that you're overlaying over the top of this paper so you will have to go back into the blending options on the uh, graphic layer and uh, adjust those sliders that we adjusted earlier uh, just to make sure that it takes shape over the new colour and the uh, new highlights and the new shadows. So that's the final design, I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm ready to upload to Instagram. So pretty good, pretty cool. Use as many different variations of the texture that you took photos of. I'm sure you'd be creating your own cool designs in no time. Yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video and um, let me know down below if you uh, if you have. And if there's any other tutorials you wanna see me do or other things that you wanna learn how to make. This is my most requested tutorial, this sort of thing, like how to create paper textures and sort of how do you make your own, which I think a lot of people now are thinking about how they can be more resourceful at home and how you can actually create your own assets or create your own I don't know, get a bit more hands on with the stuff that you're creating. So um, I think it's fun and I think it's good practice. So I recommend you all start doing it and just start experimenting with things that you can create yourself. But yeah, let me know down below if you've got any other ideas for tutorials or other things you wanna see me do uh, and uh, I'll check them out and maybe I'll give them a go and, and maybe I'll shout you out on the video if you've uh, if you suggested something good. But yeah, I'm gonna go outside and enjoy a little bit of sunshine now because I'm, I'm starting to look like one of those transparent fish, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like a prit stick. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And thanks for all the support and everything on, on all the videos. I'm getting loads of great comments. So yeah, legends, cheers for that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon with a new video. So take care and uh, see you later.